Jesus has now become that door. He's the gate by which the sheep enter into the heaven. He's now the door. So the, the key to getting into heaven is we got to get to the door. Who's the door? The door is Jesus. And I'm setting all this up. So how do we open that door? How do we open Jesus to come fully as the king of the kingdom into our life? Because we know what's behind heaven's doors. Wants to, God wants to pour that out on earth. Because when Jesus was asked to teach the disciples how to pray, he said this. Pray this way. Thy kingdom come, God. Thy will be done on earth the same as it is in heaven. We know God wants what's up there to happen down here. The problem is the church has said, no, we only want part of what is up there to come here because it's too much for us to believe everything. When Jesus started preaching and teaching about the blood, the crowds left him and he looked at the, the disciples that were there that he had shown. He says, are you two going to go there? Because it was a hard thing. And he said, no, I think sometimes the church resists the hard things of God. God and try to create doctrines to explain away things for why they go without. How do we get to the place where what's behind heaven's doors is poured out here? I believe it starts by this walking in love. I, I'm going to challenge you. Speak less this week. Keep, keep, just, just keep your mouth shut. Keep them up. Husbands and wives, when you're having a, a disagreement, Watch what happens when you just, hmm. When you're in a relationship with someone and, and, and they're having a conversation and, and, and you want to jump on that, just just try not saying something. Try just, you know, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna speak not. And I'm gonna I'm gonna walk in love. I'm not gonna issue a command of them, I'm not gonna put a judgment on them. I'm not gonna become harsh in my response. I'm not gonna react literally out of my flesh, but I'm gonna walk in love. Just try that and see if it doesn't automatically, and listen, diffuse traps that Satan set for both you. Amen. He is, is, he, the Bible says in Psalm 31 that Satan has set secret snares. <laughs> and snare takes someone getting caught in it to activate it. Right. He wants us caught in the emotional responses because it activates the trap of the snare and slings us up. But if we refuse to engage or respond in our natural emotional uh, reactions, the way that we probably have out of habit disciplined ourselves to react without even noticing it, we can actually defuse what Satan's trying to do. I have seen often many people get the things of the kingdom of God backwards. Rather than walk in love first and give people the benefit of the doubt, and be compassionate to people. People tend to jump on the law and begin to create expectations of what they expect from others based on the Word of God rather than the love of God. And those people end up a mess. Those people end up confused. They end up worn down. And they end up beat down because they're always trying to measure up and trying to make everybody else measure up. I, I honestly believe that you can be the most faithful Christian in the church, but without a love walk, you're going to end up comparing other people and walking in the spirit of criticism. Let me say that again. You can be the most devout Christian, come every Sunday, read your Bible every week, every day, uh, pray every day, uh, and have everything right. But if you're not walking in love, you end up with a spirit of criticism upon you because the reading of God's Word, the consuming of God's Word when we don't walk in love creates criticism. It creates a spirit of a Pharisee. Yes. You can be the best theologian and know the Word of God inside and out. But if you aren't walking in love, you've really got nothing more than a magnifying glass in front of you to expose everybody's weaknesses. And you jump on that. You can be the best prayer warrior out there. You can be the person who prays all the time. But if you're not someone who's, who's walking in love, you really become a manager of the gossip chain rather than the intercessor for the hurt and the wounded. Let me give you something that God shared with me. Because some of you, how many of you, how many in here honestly, you don't have to raise your hand, but just answer to yourself. How many of you honestly have people that you're just struggling with forgiving? If you're only forgiving people because that's what the Bible says to do, you're not walking in love. Though the words come out of your mouth, I forgive, you're really not walking in love. If you're only doing it because God instructs us to do it, that's not an act of love, that's an act of obedience. 
And obedience without love driving it becomes legalistic. When you forgive somebody because you want to, that's when you're walking in love. I hear people all the time, well, you know, I forgave them. No, you didn't. You may have forgiven them because it's what it's the right thing to do. But if you aren't forgiving them because you want to, ever hear me? You forgive people because you want to. You don't hold things against people because you don't want to. We get caught up sometimes in church doing it because it's the right thing to do. But if it isn't done for the right reasons or the right motives, it's really a useless act. You can't do it because you're supposed to. That's why God gave us a free will. It isn't that God wants to force that on us. And sometimes we understand freedom of choice and free will. But we get our, we find ourselves doing things because it's what the Bible tells us to do. And then we wonder why the kingdom of God's not opened and poured out into our life. It's because the motives behind what we're doing aren't really full. They aren't pure. It's out of an act of, of, of sacrifice than, rather than out of an act of obedience. Okay, God, I'm going to do it because your word tells me to do it, but I really don't want to do it. That's sometimes what our actions are saying to God, but we don't get it. It doesn't register. God, I'm, I forgive that person for hurting me or offending me, but deep down inside, you're really not wanting to. You're doing it because it's the right thing to do. When we forgive somebody because we want to, that's when the love of God starts to work in our life. I believe that the kingdom of God grows through obedience. In Genesis 1.28, listen to what he says. He says, he's telling Adam, who's now the king of the kingdom. Do you know that Adam was supposed to first be the king of the kingdom? You realize that? It wasn't Jesus. It was supposed to be Adam. That was his kingdom. Because God says this in 128 of Genesis, you be fruitful and you multiply, you fill the earth, you subdue it. You have dominion over everything. The, the earth was Adam's kingdom and he was supposed to be the king. That's why Jesus is often referred to as the second Adam and Adam's referred to as the first. Adam was to be the first king representing humanity. We were supposed to be the first kings of this earth and the domain in it. We were to have all authority over it. But that was sacrifice, as I said earlier, when we failed to obey God and walk in love towards God. We shifted, Adam shifted his love for God to his love for self and emotion and pleasure. What he saw on the tree was better than what he saw in his God. Adam's first assignment that God gave him was, you're to expand the boundaries of this new kingdom. Go out and subdue God. Said so In other words, go out and conquer. There was no enemy to conquer. He wasn't talking about going out into battle. He was talking about growing in my, growing in this relationship and you will subdue and conquer everything around you. Hear me. When we walk in love, we, that's why the Bible says love conquers a mouth. Come on. When we walk in love, it expands the boundaries. 